Hey guys, today we're going to discuss the art of crazy making. Yep, these guys have it down to an art. In relationships, crazy making is a form of emotional abuse. Okay, so anyway, if you are feeling self-doubt, and if you are feeling like, you know, you can't make good choices or maybe uh, you just lost your self-confidence it's a good chance your partner is practicing the art of crazy making I will tell you that one of the things that was used against me is people telling me that I said things I didn't say when I was recovering from the thyroid issue that took about two years for them to get it straight, um, they would come up into my room and they would tell me, oh, I said this and I said that. But I wasn't that sick to know that this is not what I said and not what I meant. And so one thing that I started doing was whenever I would have a conversation, since we didn't have a lot of recording devices like we do now, where I record things uh, like, uh, well, direct TV, for instance, I had problems with them, but I recorded their calls, but then you just had a pen and paper. So what I would do is I would, uh, if it was an important conversation, I would write down what I said. I would write down the date and time. That's how bad it got with my narcissistic abuser. I would write down the date and the time and exactly what I said. So when they came up to tell me, oh, but you said, I pulled out my little notebook and I said, no, at 1043 on such and such a date, this is my sentence to you. That my friend is crazy making but you keep your journal and write it down or record it so that they can't say you said or did something you didn't do. Crazy making can occur when your partner convinces you that something happened or when it didn't, such as they told you about an event that was coming up and they told you you know, it would be a certain date and whatever, but actually they had not. And they just swear up and down they told you. So you begin to doubt yourself as to did he really tell me or did he not? This causes you to be destabilized. Everything is somehow always your fault. That's a big one in crazy making. Crazy making partners rarely admit to doing anything wrong. Has your crazy maker ever said, I'm sorry? Or has he ever admitted to doing anything wrong? They make you doubt your perceptions. Crazy makers will say provocative statements immediately to let you know that you are being too sensitive and that you should listen more. They will tell you that you have misunderstood them. It will always be your fault. May try harder to please them because it feels like you are the cause of all the trouble when in fact your perceptions are valid but are completely undermined in a crazy making relationship. I have witnessed confident people become a shell of their former selves after being in a crazy making relationship. It can happen to the best of us. Now I will tell you I printed out tons of material a few years ago for my best friend who is now in a relationship who tried to get out but unfortunately she was not able to hopefully in time she will she's not happy and she has completely changed her personality is completely changed she is trapped and I pray for her but I will tell you that all of this is real and they do know what they're doing we went to and uh, my 
ex was going to Hawaii with my son the next day, but something was wrong with him all day. He sat way up in the nosebleed section, and we sat on the floor by the stage so we could see the child dance. Well, my son was out. He didn't come to the recital, and uh, he was going with his father to Hawaii. He calls me, and he asks me, could he stay out? Well, first of all, he asked me to speak to Dad. I said, well, I can't get to him. He's way up, you know, in, in the nosebleed section of the Coliseum. I, I don't know what, why he did that, but he would not sit with us. I guess it was too good. But anyway, um, <clears throat> he said, well, can I stay out a little later? And I said, uh, have you got everything packed to go? Because I knew that his father was dressing. He says, oh, yeah, I'm all ready to go tomorrow. So anyway, I said, well, uh, you need to be home by this time because we'll be home by that time and I don't want you out. So, again, walking on eggshells, walking out of that Coliseum over there, I was thinking about how am I going to approach him and tell him what happened? Now, this shouldn't happen. After all, I'm the child's mother. I should be able to make decisions. But as we were walking out, I told him, uh, what had happened and we got in the car at the parking lot over here at the Coliseum and uh, He started accusing me of undermining him. I tried to explain him the situation that he was up there uh, And he said well did your son tell you that he has no driver's license on him and I went oh my goodness no so I was trying to call my son. I was in the car. This guy was driving and um, I was trying to hear my son to ask him, do you have a driver's license on you? And um, he was talking over me and I didn't mean anything. I, I went, shut up, you know, like this, just shut up so I can hear him. And he says, yes, I have my driver's license. And then he asked me, he says, can, can I stay out 30 minutes more? I went, no, you need to be home by the time we get there. Well, anyway, after I got off the phone, the FU started flying right in my ear, and I know that, oh my goodness, it was, FU, FU, don't you ever tell me to shut up. Don't you ever undermine me. Oh, something completely innocent, something I was trying to take care of, you know. And he says, don't you ever, ever, FU, FU. And he's driving the car on Highway 90, the busiest highway, and one of the busiest highways in the world. And it's at night. So we get out, and I mean, I was sitting there, and I had had enough, so I said, shut up. Oh, my goodness. He stopped the car, dead stop, on Highway 90. And then I wanted to get out of the car because he st started calling me names. We got up on another road. And he was still fussing, telling me I was an instigator. I, you know, I created all these problems. And then I said, let me out of the car. You know, just let me out because he was driving so dangerously. And he swung into this parking lot. I tried to open the door. As soon as I opened the door to step out, he pulled out again and spun the car around. So basically, when we got back to the house or on, we were not but a mile from the house he was like it's all your fault it's all your fault it's all your fault and because I knew that this man was like losing it you know I said uh, yes it's all my fault it's always my fault yes you're right everything I had to be you know I had to let him agree with everything he accused me of even though I had not done anything wrong. And, um, you know, um, to get us home safely because he was driving so dangerously, he had spun the car around. And I was like, yes, it's all my fault. You're right. I'm just an instigator. And as soon as I stepped out of the car at the house, I said, what makes you think that I'm going to let you take my son to Hawaii? Now, all the stuff started could not calm this man down. There was nothing we could do. My son took the blame for everything. 
And of course, my son wanted to go to Hawaii and I didn't want him to miss out on the trip. So I did allow him to go. But things did get weird after that. But that is just uh, one of the things that can happen. Um, the other thing is he, uh, undermining you. Like um, I was taking my son to a doctor for ADHD, to a doctor that I knew. And before I knew it, I was down there and I said, I will take him to the doctor today. And he goes, oh, no, no, we, we'll find somebody to take me to the doctor. Basically, they were lying to me because he found another doctor without telling me. And it was on the military base and I couldn't go on it. So I wasn't even able to get to my child's doctor. And I wasn't even asked. So tell me, who was doing the undermining? And tell me, who was hypocritical? So crazy Mark crazy making is an art and crazy making is crazy and don't let them do this to you and um, I see it so clear getting away from it and studying about it just uh, get away from it if you can keep a journal um, <clears throat> realize that it's not you I love you guys I want you to be healthy mentally healthy spiritually God bless you all out.